Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that, no matter what, happens twice a week. Yeah? Yeah. No matter what, huh? Pre- pretty much. From here on pretty out. Huh? Is that, are we committed? Oh, I wish we would or have should... banked some episodes for this week. <laughs> yeah. Like you'd like, you'd like yeah. we should bank some episodes in case of an emergency. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll do that sometime. Also, would have been a good time to do it. Not to stress you out or anything, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be out <laughs> in a couple days. So mm. we'll see. Okay. <laughs> so, so more problems. Yeah, more we have, problems. We have to do a Patreon also. <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. It, <laughs> I might be doing mine from my phone. Okay. <laughs> might have to patch me in. That works. We can do that. <laughs> uh, it's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys talk about old games. Yeah. This week... Uh, last week... Well, this week before last week, we'll be told <laughs> you... I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I... Uh, you'd mentioned... Hey, tell us to choose for H2. And I was yeah. like, yeah, let's do that. Uh, it's going to be next week. It's yeah. going to be next week. Yeah. Uh, it's on, it's on me. It's on me. <laughs> uh, I had a pretty exceptionally bad week yeah. that literally gave me no time to play the game or the other one. We were also, normally we try to double up on Sundays now. Yeah. I uh, like that. Although yeah. it did not work out so much today. Oh, uh, yeah. Because, yeah, today was bad. I mean, everything this week has been, I mean, been pretty terrible. Yeah. So uh, we're going to just do two, like, fun for us episodes. And, and then you just know I that like we that. get you episodes no matter what. I like that. And then we'll do next week, we shoot to Rage 2 and Three Ninjas. Supposedly. Supposedly. <laughs> Anything could happen, but that's the plan. <laughs> this may this may be our last transmission. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we sound different? I feel like we do. Yeah, so I feel like we sound good. I do. Yeah. Because yeah. right, we are recording in a different space uh-huh. right now. If that tells you anything, we're not in <laughs> Tadpog Annex. We're, that was, we're not in Tadpog Annex 2. Right. Because that was Electric Boogaloo Annex. Yeah. We're in Tadpog Annex 3, or we should... We should maybe name it something else. Yeah, we're in... Tadpog High Rise? <laughs> yeah, all right. Tadpog High Rise. Otherwise known as Ryan's Game Room. Uh-huh. It's a nice looking game room. Yeah. My, my house sold. Uh, had, to, uh, had to get the fuck out. So the the anne- I took plenty of pictures of it before I started having to pack it and move it out. So whenever we get an Instagram and shit like that, that's all going to be in there. So everybody's with the Annex... That was my pride and joy looked like. Yeah. Hook me up with those. I'll put them on the uh, Facebook okay. the Facebook album. Yeah, because uh, Phil had mentioned, like, I didn't know the annex looked like that. More pictures. So I took them. Yeah, I'm glad that you did. Uh, but the house sold. So this week has been, like, so now packing you, and moving. That explains all the stacks of money that you have piled yeah. up <laughs> in the high rise. I just, like, I just, just give it to me cash. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to, like, keep it in a house, like, just a few miles away. <laughs> Real estate agent did not like that. <laughs> I just I want it in ones. Thank you. Yes, quarters, please. <laughs> you know, I want to Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> I'm gonna go beat the arcade stand of Pit Fighter. So I want it in all quarters. <laughs> yeah. So that I mean doing that was rough enough, and I had a a killer week in class. It's like my chemistry class just would not quit. Surprise uh, assignments that I only had two days before, you know prior. The worst thing by far, that's why I said it for last, that was absolutely terrible this week, was uh, yesterday I got a call from Meg telling me she was in the emergency room and Kenna had been bitten by a dog. I'm not even going to pretend to be surprised because you did tell me this yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I could have saved it yeah. and just made you like well, yo, be horrified. Man. Oh, I'm glad you didn't. Because when you when you sent me a message yeah. yesterday, like my stomach was a knot. Like that is that was like, oh my god, uh, it was like horrible news. It's a it's 
it was it's a terrible situation. It could have been so much worse. But she was over at um, her grandmother's house when a a neighbor's dog just sort of jumped at her and ended up going to nipping at her face. Um, I, I thank God it missed for the most part, um, but it did manage to get um, the sides of her nose. So one tooth like sort of tore a gash on the side of her nose, and the other one. Uh, perforated uh, the side of her nostril and rushed to the emergency room. Uh, she, I mean, Kenna is, an, is a resilient child because she was yeah. upset for a while, got in the ER, like she calmed down, watched some Doc McStuffins on Meg's iPhone, and she was like, I mean, she's her face, they haven't cleaned it <laughs> off or anything, so she's just covered in blood. Oh, she looks man. like hell in the cell, like Undertaker, like it's just mm. everywhere. And Meg is covered in it. Her mother's covered in it. Uh, but she's just like, Dog McStuffins, Daniel Tiger on the iPhone. She's like, what? I'm f- <laughs> Ugga mugga, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hurt so much here or here. <laughs> uh, but uh, thankfully, a um, plastic surgeon was in town. We thought we were going to have to go to Vanderbilt. Yeah. Um, once she got like cleaned off and looked at... Um, they recommended she have some form of plastic surgery and a very good surgeon was there at the hospital. He was doing a jaw reconstruction. So as soon as he did up with that, he worked on Kenna for an hour and a half and put stitches and everything on the inside and outside of her nose and surgical glue, put everything back. And she, she's doing wonderful. She's acting as if nothing ever happened. She just has some bruising and some swelling and, uh, she's, everything's going to be fine. They said they didn't think there'd be really any scarring or... Or anything. She's so she's she's Good. okay. I hope no one loves that dog. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I used to want a boxer. I don't want now. Oh, that, the yeah, kind of dog that's, it was. That's what it was. Yeah. So it was a literal boxer. I got <laughs> from the it was 30s. Mike, Mike Tyson <laughs> came up and just bit Kenna on the nose. <laughs> oh. So that made that made my week. Yeah. I, yeah. Yesterday I was like. I told you what was going on. Yeah. So I don't know what's going to shake, you know. Yeah. But she, I mean, we got to take her home right afterwards. She ended up staying in the hospital. So and she was totally fine. She slipped off the anesthesia. And then today it was just business as usual. And we have and we have to record too tonight because you're going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be out yeah. of town because I got a message. I signed up for a strength and conditioning membership in like the National Strength and Conditioning Association. That gave me a discount on of my personal trainer certification exam and prepaid for that like a long time ago and all that's about to expire. So it's like, okay, well, I don't want to have wasted $300. So now I'm going to drive to Louisville to take that and see how it goes. Yeah. I haven't studied any of that in a long time. <laughs> hey, you got to take a shot, right? So, I yeah, mean, I mean, it's already paid for it. Yeah. It's rather, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, just make sure that you mention to them, remind them that you paid for it. Just be like, hey, <laughs> I paid for this. So and I, and as, you, bring, as you turn your bring test Kenna. in. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that in case Wednesday's episode <laughs> is uh, the Ryan Walters free, uh, his, his personal episode. His exclusive right. episode. We're going we're gonna to ruin it. Yeah, maybe. Possibly. Maybe. We're going to try to record a second one, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Because it's already late because today after Kenan went to bed and she was okay, I had to finish – Tests in chemistry, and yeah. then, cause yeah, I had no time to play the game, so it was like, no, nah, Dave, we'll just figure out. Let's just do something. It's fine. I'm cool with it. I understand. Um, I mean, that really takes the wind out of my sails because I had a really good story about a dog biting my nose, but now it's kind of overshadowed by the horrific events that happened yesterday. But I'm glad. That, I'm glad. Super glad. Or that you're an Annie uh, from Harry Potter, the Annie Magus. And you can turn into a boxer. It's. <laughs> <laughs> I am super glad that she is feeling better because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, I was worried about her. What's up, Internet? I am Dave, your bespectacled host, and I um, hardly have an intro story. Uh, while Tyler was going through... Uh, I wish I didn't have that intro story. So. <laughs> while Tyler was marching through hell yesterday, <laughs> yep. um, I did something that I'd never do, and that is like, uh, this is so weird. My my mom came over to visit. I was watching Henry. She came over to visit. 
Um, she and I started talking about, all right, all things begin with Taco <laughs> John's and end with Taco John's. Uh-huh. Because earlier in the week, uh, I was talking to her about Big Ed's. Mm, mm-hmm. Big Ed's is a restaurant that you and I were talking about off the mics yeah. last Sunday. Um, you'd gotten a shrimp po' boy there. And I love shrimp po' boys, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the best shrimp po' boys are at a check-and-go gas station in Slido, Louisiana. Um, so much better than Big Ed's. <laughs> <po'> boys. <laughs> By the way, Big Ed's has excellent shrimp. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they're huge. The the po boy has the the po boy that I ordered had four gigantic shrimp on it, <laughs> yeah. and I was like, "What the fuck is this noise?" As opposed to like two dozen like small fried. Yeah, po that's boys. what a po boy yeah. is. But I was like, "Oh well, the sauce is good. The shrimp is delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the wrong size, but it was fine." So I was telling her about it. I was like, "You got to at least try it because the shrimp's good." Um, and she said, "Where is it?" I said, "Well, it's in the." It's in the old Taco John's at the at the abandoned Cardinal Point, <laughs> and so she was like, "Oh wow, I forgot that that it's was even a thing." It's in the last place you probably want to go into. Yeah, Duke. <laughs> yeah. no, Cardinal Point is so weird because it's like not only is it not like a real block, mm-hmm. not, it's not a square block. It's, it's like a it's triangle. Very strange, yeah. Um, not only that, it's like everything around it is not bad. Like it's not a bad area mm-hmm. around it. But that triangle shaped block in Paducah is tr- super trashy. Like it is really, really trashy. Yep. Like unbelievably so. <laughs> I went there. Uh, I can't remember if I told this on the mics or not. But uh, when, after we had Chris Edler on for pinball, mm-hmm. I was like, man, I bet there has to be a pinball machine at the bowling alley. I'm going to go check it out because – no one knows the bowling alley's open because there's no open sign. They're, they don't even have electricity <laughs> running to the side outside. Uh, so I went there for lunch, and when I did, I was I was like, holy shit, man, what happened to Cardinal Point? Well, you went where for lunch exactly? Uh, well, I went to— It sounded like you were at the bowling alley for lunch. No, I did. Oh, okay. No, no, I did go because I was like, well, I've got an hour lunch. I'm just going to go play pinball for an hour. I'm not going to eat today oh, is what I, is what oh, I okay. did. Oh, <laughs> okay. I thought like— I feel like some bowling alley food. I'm going to go have lunch at the bowling alley. Yeah, I mean, I, I could have, but I, <laughs> yeah. I did not take that risk because I had to go back to work. If I didn't have anything to do, I'd be like, yeah, okay, give me some nachos and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> uh, they had a pinball machine, and it was a CSI table. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it seemed to work okay, but it was, uh, wasn't really fun, and... The electronic screen was completely broken. <laughs> so it's like I had no idea what the score was. I didn't know like, what I was supposed to do. Uh, there was like a, a solve crime. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> there was a centrifuge in the middle of the table. I can tell you that much. And if you shot the ball in it, it picked it up and it spun it around like it was trying to separate blood. <laughs> I don't know. I, I assume that was worth a lot of points. Um, but anyway, when I went there for lunch, I was like, Holy God, what happened to this triangular shaped block in my mm-hmm. town? Uh, cause I remember going there in high school, like for dates and stuff. We would go bowling. Yeah. Uh, and it was, it looks like a block of like 28 days later. It does. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, but Big Ed's is there, which is why I even went mm-hmm. down that little winding tangent. And it's weird because it stands out. It's sort of just like in the middle of the triangle. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it's in this very small, like extremely Taco John's looking building. Because yeah. it's got like the what like the the terracotta shingles. It reminds and stuff me like of the Toad House from Mario 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There will be a link to this uh, Taco John's in the show notes. I'll link the abandoned photograph um, because that's what got us started. Uh, I was telling my mom about Big Ed's, and mm-hmm. I was like, she, I was telling her where it was, and I was like, man, how long ago did that Taco John's close? Because I don't remember man. it ever being open. I feel like I do, but man, it was a long time ago. So we were like, okay, we were going back and forth, and it's like, okay, let's figure out when it was open. And then we got caught in this like Google rabbit hole where we're like, we're like pulling up windows and open new tabs and like searching Taco John's locations. I went to Topics and found like a Taco John's thread on top of the <laughs> the hot gossip site in Paducah. Uh, let's go to the bowels of the internet pertaining <laughs> to Paducah. It was so <laughs> weird, man, because it's like I did not realize that there was a little segment. Of topics that is just wholesome, and it's just people talking about old Taco Johns. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so we fell down this rabbit hole, and then she you found. Remember Taco John? Oh, I beat his bitch ass last week. That <laughs> meth head. He had a big dick. That's like every other comment on topics. <laughs> Uh, I, topics is like everywhere, right? It's like a, a I know, yeah, yeah. It, it has I mean, regions for everywhere. Okay. So it's like a Craigslist for just like I, awful. Comments I feel like it's probably people. more popular around here because, like in Paducah and Benton, that's like, man, man. it's really bad. Oh, it's, it's so really bad. bad. It's so bad. It's really bad. So we found these photographs on Flickr of it's a, like YouTube comments without YouTube videos. <laughs> it's perfect. It's just what we need. Uh, we found this Flickr album that a dude named Charles had gone all around Paducah in 2008 and taken photos of abandoned buildings. So we were like, oh, there's the Taco John's restaurant. And then just for some reason, we were both like, you know what we should do? Drive around and find all these buildings. <laughs> and that's what we did. That's what we did on Saturday. We just <laughs> we drove around. We waited. Nikki came home. And, and we were like, hey, we were talking about buildings today. Uh, do you want to, like, go try to find all these buildings of Paducah and see how different they look? <laughs> and Nikki was like, yeah, let's do it. And we grabbed Henry. We strapped some shoes on him, threw him in the car seat. <laughs> Henry and we was like, just this rolled. is fucking stupid. <laughs> this is lame, Dad. <laughs> For three hours, we rolled around <laughs> and uh, went to Cardinal Point, and we got to see the Taco John's, which is now Big Ed's. We tried to find this dry cleaner, apparently, that used to be there, and it was tore down. Like, I mean, it was like some CSI-level <laughs> shit, because, like, I was looking at the photograph of the of this dry cleaner, right? Every time I do it, makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's oh, our green man. reference for Ooh, the year. Yikes. <laughs> I was looking at this photograph of the dry cleaner, and I was like, okay, I've never seen this building before. I don't recall it. But if you look in the window, I see a reflection of a Renaissance sign. Also, I can't make out the words in that sign, but I recognize the font. So if we find the sign with that font <laughs> next to a rent center sign, I'll know we're in the right place. <laughs> So we go to the we go to Cardinal Point, the we go to the bowling alley, and we're driving to the shopping center, and I was like, oh, look, check it out. That is a Renaissance sign that's been flipped backwards because that building is empty. Uh, and also next to it is the word satellite. I don't know why, but it's in that font. So then, okay, so we were like, okay, so if we stand here in front of the bowling alley and turn around, that dry cleaner should have been right here. But it's not. It's gone. So the mystery remains. I need to figure out what happened to the dry cleaner. Everything else we found. Okay. So I'm proud to say. Man, I wish there, there's going to be like a 90... Like 1995 album, surely. I hope. You know what? I, mean, this... I, do, I do have that that caricature ish painting of Paducah. Oh, I love that. That's like mm -hmm. from like 1988 or something like it. that. All the monuments there. That they've got like, one uh, framed in Starnes too. Oh, really? Because mm -hmm. yeah, most almost all of those places are gone now. They're in that in that painting. It's a bummer. There are places I found in Paducah that I didn't even know existed. Like, seriously. Like, buildings that I should know existed. Like, city buildings. Yeah. Like, the... This is great. <laughs> There's the courthouse. Yeah. I'll pay for my tags. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, forget, I could finally do that. <laughs> is that the big building where they keep all the books? Mm. <laughs> so, that's that's my Paducah chat. Mm. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, what do you want to do for this episode? Talk about... <laughs> Have you been playing anything? Been playing. We, do you remember when we used to do this? Yeah. Do you remember when we used to like have a segment? What you've been playing, Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> and then we had kids. <laughs> what you've been playing? Parenthood. Yeah. Is, is that an SNES game based on the movie? I wish. <laughs> God. Or the TV show where you're the actor who plays coach. Be great. Craig T. Nelson? Craig T. Nelson. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. And let's see. I think the last thing I really sat down and played just because I enjoyed it was Persona Q. Yeah. I knocked out a few more stages of that. Is that the one that's set up? That's like a dungeon crawler? Yeah, it's it's an Etrian. Uh, it's basically a Persona 3 and 4 combined reskin of like the Etrian Odyssey system. So characters from 3 and 4. Yeah, characters okay. from 3 and 4. And like a, a similar storyline like a a creepy storyline but in your the the Etrian Odyssey style where you're first person dungeon crawling and solving puzzles and things like that how big is your party I and mean, can you can you combine like you get to choose who's, who's in your party yeah you, there it's the entire cast from 3 and 4 That's and cool. you can plus uh two new characters and you get to choose 5 i think and you have to pick a balance between 
short, long range, what kind, because basically every person has a different element of magic that they specialize in. So you have to pick about, if you know what kind of enemies you're going to be fighting and things gotcha. like that, because it's very so important to utilize weaknesses. Dungeon, you bring all your water Pokemon? Yep, okay. exactly. Is that how that works? I, th- I think so, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I just made a complete <laughs> ass of myself with the Pokemon crowd. You take a bug to a to a poison. Come on, level. man! You bring you bring phantom Pokemon. You take a fairy to a time. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I have, yeah. I don't even. When I played Pokemon, when I played Pokemon back in the day in yeah. red, red and blue, I didn't give a shit about <laughs> elemental weaknesses. <laughs> Did, I guess it didn't matter. It did like I just had I had my Alakazam and I would just psychic, psychic, psychic everything, and I was fine. Is everything? But my phone apparently recognized psychic <laughs> as a voice. <laughs> man. Searching for precog. <laughs> Because uh, I knocked out a few more stages of that because I like it, but at the same time it gets it gets sort of tedious and boring because you're just doing like it has some of like the kind of fun role playing elements, but there's no like reward for them. At least in like the Persona games, like when you do that, that's how you raise your affinity with certain signs that affect you know certain characters. Like there's you, a reason. Hey, to, get that anime poon. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Whoever you're gonna date to the yeah. highest level. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but in here, it's just like you get to just watch. You get to read a, a funny scene, which is nice. But like, there's just I wish there was some kind of reward for doing it. Or, but it's all first person. Is that what you said? Yeah. You, that you, seems weird. You dungeon crawl first person. That's like an old school Dungeons and Dragons SSI on the PC. Yeah, and it's all laid out right? like on a grid, so you move very step. Yeah. Step, turn, 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 step. step. That is that is very old school. Yeah. Does it does it give you a map or do you have to draw it out? It gives you the it gives you the grid and then like your highlights you and but then you're placing like if you if a trap or an enemy, some enemies are shown. So basically it gives you like a rough overlay and then you're filling in the map. And you fill them this is a DS game, right? Yep. You yep. F- and do you fill the on map the bottom out screen, your, yeah, you okay. you fill it out That's cool. and then because it's it's interesting and it's fun. I just I can't play a lot of it at one time. Yeah, is it a long game? I assume that it is because yeah, it also. If I were to try to get a hundred percent, because yeah. like there are special hidden treasure chests on every every floor. So if you get a hundred percent on every floor, you get a very nice bonus prize. I've gotten it several times, but like not at all. Like every single like because you'll go. The premise is like it takes place basically in the. Because the parties are from different time periods. Okay. Like I think they're like five years apart, maybe. Okay. But it is you're not you're sure what happens. Like the clock tower in the center of town, like f- time stops. These two high schools are visiting for some ja- like it's two Japanese high schools, so it's some sort of cultural festival. And the other one high school comes to the other high school to do this festival, and everyone else is just sort of like. All the NPCs are just, they're not ghosts, but they're just, you can't really interact with them. They're just there. They're kind of frozen in time, like, kind of deal, or? Uh, they just don't have, like, any personalities. Oh, okay. They're just, like, they're going through the motions of what maybe they would have been doing. Salary men. Yes. <laughs> and the two characters, the two parties recognize they're the only ones that are still, like, active. And then you're going out, um, looking at different points in the high school that look different. Uh-huh. And you'll find, like some sort of a portal or something like that that will take you into something like that. And you'll have to explore the dungeon and then try to piece, you're trying to piece together what happens and why everything's going on the way it is. The characters realize they're from different times and you know, so it's, 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 it's interesting. I really like it, but just the same because every, because I mean, every floor is very large. Every floor is going to take you, I mean, an hour, two hours, maybe, and Jeez. there. Are, How many floors are in a dungeon? Four, four or five. I think it, it increases. So as you're you go looking on. at at least four hours per to, dungeon to explore. Yeah, and I'm on like the fourth dungeon, I think, right now, and they're all like variations on the same theme, and there'll be in every every floor, not every floor, but a big thing is like these things called FOEs, which are enemies that are. Way too fucking strong for you to fight. Uh, that like, spells foe, Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense that an enemy would be your foe. Your foe. <laughs> and because, yeah, these will cream you if you uh, bump up against them when they're facing you and you have to have to run. But they also have some sort of, like, 
tactical thing because they might only approach you if you're looking at them at the same time and you'll have to figure out how to move them around. Some will like fire arrows that might make you walk in reverse or gotcha. it's it's a tool it's always a puzzle to try and get around them and well, work out cool. work with them in the environment. I don't know why but that reminded you saying that reminded me of uh Zelda games for some reason. Yeah. Cuz it always seems like there's kind of like I love it and like that's I'm not a huge fan of that franchise mm-hmm. as you know but like that's one of my favorite things is when they they introduce an element that just changes the gameplay just a little bit. Yeah. You know, like not drastically, not like you're in race cars all of a sudden, <laughs> <laughs> but like it just changes something where it's like, oh, now left and right are reversed but while you're under the status. Yeah, because there's of one like in one dungeon, like there's a part in Persona 4 where, because I feel like I mentioned it before, every class had to like make some kind of a room in their festival and the main group in 4 decided to make the group date cafe. Where right. they all go on group yeah. dates together. Uh-huh. Well, it was it's a weird part of Persona Four because like it's a huge failure. No one comes and they're just like standing there. And apparently, from what Shake has told me, like just dating in Japan is just weird overall. Like no matter what, he was like, yeah, you don't really, you can't really approach a girl and like talk to them and ask them out or anything like that. You kind of just have to know their family or their you know their your families have to know each other as like. Yeah. So there's no way to meet new people. So it works Not- just like it does in anime. It sounds like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I've heard that I've heard that this is a complete tangent, but I've heard that teenagers don't date anymore. Do you know that that's true? Do you know any teens, Tyler? Uh, I do know a few teens. I don't know that they don't date, but I think the from how we from how we worked, I think it's it's different. Yeah, I, I, it has to be right. Yeah, although I mean, I guess here here's the thing that I guess is really different, but is still similar. Like in high school, I remember like MSN Messenger, ICQ, Yahoo Messenger, AIM, all, all that stuff was huge. All the hits. Yeah. You're naming yeah. all the hits. Yeah, <laughs> that that was that was huge. That's how I spent yeah. like every night talking talking to people. Or if like it's Friday night, like yeah. you'll see one person online. You'll have these like very intimate conversations that don't really translate that well to the real world. Like when you see them on Monday. Oh, like they pretend like it didn't weird. happen or. Well, I remember I asked a girl to homecoming one time yeah. over, over ICQ. <laughs> okay. And she accepted yeah. and things like that. And then like when I went to see her, when I saw her at school, I was like, I didn't feel like that really happened. It felt like it was so There's different. There's a disconnect. So like, yeah, uh-huh. I had to sort of like talk to her and basically get her to like, that didn't happen, Ron. You didn't tell me you were going to dance with me. It wasn't like some like weird person I was talking to or something like that. So it was just strange. Yeah. But where that was, I feel sort of how we socialized after school. We're able to talk to people when yeah. I'm sure uh, the you know a subset of years before that it was you know it was going to be phone calls and yeah. then it's slowly changing and now I'm sure it's like all texting and it's, it's all Instagram bone town all the time right yeah yeah just, I mean, just Twitter and dick pics and everything it's fine I don't I don't understand I, I'm starting to sound like drunk uncle I don't know <laughs> I'm Twitter your dick pic on Instagram <laughs> I'm just saying that I'm jealous that I uh, was born. Uh, when I was and not like, <laughs> I, like to be a teen right now, if you and like Henry could switch places, amazing. No, I don't want to be that young. Uh, I want to be like, I don't know, 16 years older than him. Cause I feel like the teen- teenagers like have it made now. They just have mm-hmm. like, I mean, it just seems like they just have sex on demand. <laughs> It's like single, like twenty, like twenty year olds. It feels like they just have it on demand. Like the, just like I don't even have to go through. Like I don't even have to talk to a person. Just like one eight hundred p word. There we go. <laughs> Come on over to my house to man. say something that's going to sound extremely antiquated, but I don't know yeah. how else to no, say. it. Everything that I have just said made me sound like a fifty year old man. And I'm not complaining. Like yeah. I'm not like I'm sure people will complain about like oh, but. <laughs> It sort of seems like courtship is dead. Yeah. To where it's just like And this. I love that idea. Yeah, and I'm yeah, I'm fine with that. Like it's that, that, like that shit sucked in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that now it's sort of like you talk and text and get to know each other and then yeah. like then then it's whatever, you know, yeah. in a or I guess I don't know because it, it's it's weird to sound so jaded because I don't really know. I just know what I see. No, I don't like, either. I just assume. Yeah. I, like I just assume it's just as easy as be like Look, I don't know. I don't know what I barely know what swipe and left means. <laughs> but all I know is on your phone, uh, if you're single, uh, you can just swipe in a direction and then sex happens. Yeah. 
I mean, because <laughs> we were married before. Um, what, what's the app we're fucking talking about right now? Uh, is is that Tinder or is, Tinder? Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. T- no, I love that I had <laughs> to are, ask. Yeah, we were married before <laughs> before Tinder. So when Tinder was a thing, you're already married. It's like, oh well, fuck, never mind. I do remember. I I got such enjoyment when I got to watch Jacob use that app, uh, and I hope he's okay with me mentioning this. I'm sure mm-hmm. that he is. I hope. Uh, but I love because like I could live vicariously through him and be like, oh yeah, no. No, no to that one. No oh, that yeah. One. <laughs> we were driving somewhere. I the whole him. trip, man. The whole trip. It was like a two hour drive. And the whole trip, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good one. Tell me more about her. Tell me more about her. Let me see her photos. Let me see. That's a good one, man. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter, Twitter her. Yeah. Sw- let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I never, I've never told Nikki that story. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. It's like no, I did that chance. shit in middle school and high school. So it's just like yeah. I think that girl's cute. Okay, well I'll try to hook her up with a friend. They can full run and then tell me about it. There just you so go. I know. There you go. That's so <laughs> fine. Every now and then I text Jacob. I'm like, hey man, let me smell those fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. But it, when he was when he was doing Not this. anymore. It's always Galen. It's boring. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least my figure. Shit, find oh, some, get something new, on, man. I man. know that. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to trick me. You put some Stetson on there. <laughs> That's Josh. Don't try. Don't bring this shit at me. You would leave your golden lasso at home, man. Uh, Persona Q. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was. It's a weird segment of the game where it crash and burn. Like, but then like the festival gets attacked or some something like that in the game. But in here, like, when they go down, they didn't bring Group Date Cafe that, to this new festival. but Because everyone hated it. Right. So when they go down to that floor, it's suddenly back again, but it looks kind of warped and twisted. So they know, okay, this is... So a- it's even worse than it was right, before. Right, right. <laughs> so then, like, you step in, and you're in, like, this strange ro- romance, like, twisted area where you have to go through these dungeons, and, like, at every door you're asked... A strange, like, dating, online dating type question that you have to answer. Are they ghosts? Is this ghost dating? Maybe. <laughs> is that a, spoil it for is that a game? Ghost dating? <laughs> ghost dating? I mean, I feel like we played the pigeon dating, dating you know, game. Yeah. <laughs> there has to be a ghost dating game. <laughs> it's like anime Fatal style Frame? Ghostbusters. I think Fatal Frame is a, is a ghost date simulator. <laughs> yeah, right? I think so. And yeah, so like you go through every door and answer all these online dating type questions and you're given your match within your party at the very end and you fight like this fucked up priest monster and then I don't cause I haven't finished it. He like, marries you. <laughs> <laughs> well he does like the weird thing about that boss battle is he'll he makes you make vows to him and every the vow changes yeah. every round. Every vow is basically uh something is off limits. So, like, magic is off limits. Like, gotcha. vow to not use magic. So, he's like me. a judge in Final Fantasy Tactics. Yeah. Or... So, it was, that was one of the more interesting battles that I yeah. did. And then just using an enemy's weakness is super important. Super important in Persona. Because uh, you have all the traditional elements plus light and dark. And light and dark are instant death effects. So, I didn't use them a whole lot in Persona 3 light or 4. Light as well? Yeah. Interesting. Because uh, mostly against... If enemies are weak to whatever, but they'll work on anything, just not as often. Gotcha. So if they're weak to it, it's an insta kill kind ba- of deal. Basically, okay, yeah. Okay. And then like you upgrade as you get higher in level, the those spells will upgrade and have like a higher chance. The elemental spells higher higher damage. Those spells have higher chance of instant death. Gotcha. But it's I've used the shit out of them in Persona Q because I don't know. I feel like they're way more important than it was in the in three and four. I really ever used light and dark magic. Had you played an Etrian Odyssey game prior to this? Not once. So this is all this is all completely new. Totally to you. new. Do you feel like this is a good introduction into that? Since kind of I series, love Persona, or, yeah, because yeah. it's giving me a story reason to yeah. play through it. Okay. Whenever if I were to start on an Etrian Odyssey and not care about the character or the stories, I don't I don't know how into it I would be. Gotcha. You know, that's a that's a series where I've been tempted in the past to pick up a game and just try it out. Uh, Because I've heard good things about it from people that I trust uh, and who share similar tastes. Um, But I just, I've never pulled the trigger on it because every time I like watch gameplay or something, it's like, I am not convinced that I would like this. Like, I feel like I would like it 
in small doses, but I don't feel like I could sit down and just like, all right, <sighs> this is what I'm doing for the next 12 hours. Yeah. Like, I don't think that I could do that. That's how I feel about Persona Q. Like, yeah. I'm fine to do one or two levels of a dungeon at a time, but then I just have to, I have to take a break from it. But uh, it it makes me very happy to be able to play with the characters from three and four again. Yeah, and see them interact, and the graphics are totally different. It's sort of it's an anime style and Persona and Etrian Odyssey is it's a chibi style uh-huh. animation. So which, do they do it chibi and Persona Q or and Persona Q is chibi? Yeah, yeah. Okay. three and four are anime. Gotcha. So it was it was a transition, but it actually it worked. It worked fairly well. Yeah. So cool. Because I I will finish it. You know, I just haven't had, you know, haven't had, certainly had my time yeah. recently, but sure. I definitely will finish it. Because um, the thing is, it's a very, it's a very creepy thing in the Persona series called The Velvet Room. I know in three and four, because basically it's all um, the uh, the Arcanum or, you know, whatever, the tarot, tarot cards. Okay. And every person has a different, there are different tarot cards. Okay. And, um, and t- usually all the other players, like you'll find, I think Persona Four, uh, the character, um, it's a a girl. She wears red. She runs like an inn. She's kind of a shy girl. Her symbol is like the lovers, and she specializes in fire magic and healing magic. And so, whenever you go on on dates with her, or or improve your level with her, like take her out and the right kind of dates and ask the right kind of questions, then like the lovers thing levels up. So all the monsters you make because. Each hero is uh, the fool is their symbol, and the fool is special in that he's not tied to one persona. He can have as many personas as he wants. Okay, so they're all. That's the card for all of the heroes. So in three and four, they're both the fool. Okay, so I guess that's you know because you'll get drops from different monsters. You can combine cards to get new ones and things like that. At least in in uh, yeah in three because like if you're if you have a very high affinity with a certain, like if my tower score with whoever the tower character is, uh-huh. whenever I make a make a a, um, a a persona who is also of the tower variety, uh-huh. I would gain if my level in tower was nine, it would gain nine to ten levels immediately. Gotcha. Okay. And be above my level and have skills that are a little outside of what I'm already okay. at. So how there's do you an appeal to go after and specialize? And how do you level up the the different cards? Like how do you get your tower? Up. How do you increase uh, your in power? Persona Four? Like you basically have to, because in Persona Four, let's see, your main character, you have the option at to get a night job. If you decide you want to get a night job, and you have all these different things you can do, you decide to be like a tutor on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Okay. Well, when you go and act as a tutor, uh, you meet this kind of standoffish kid who is very sheltered and things like that. And if you say the right sort of things and talk to the kid and he likes you a little bit, it establishes a bond. And once a bond is established, then like the tower card pops up. Okay. And then you have the opportunity to on Tuesdays and Thursdays go to tutor him and increase that score kind of deal. Increase that say the you know, do the right things yeah. with him and things. So it's all story like based. Yeah. Oh, cool. All all that part is all the daytime, like not in a dungeon, because it's very different in persona between your daytime activities and then going into the dungeon uh-huh. are always different. All right. So, that and once cool. you go into the dungeon, that's when it's more traditional. Like you're in, then it's in third person. You're running around random battles, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So, and then depending on picking who you'll want to spend time with your party members you like to make them level up higher. So they're stronger and their affinities are stronger. And that carries over into Persona Q. It's a little different in Q, but. Pretty much the same thing. You just don't get the the date type thing to raise scores, but bummer. Yeah, but the I guess because it's a Nature Odyssey game, not a traditional right, Persona game. Right. But I can't I can't endorse Persona three, four, and then enough, and then Q. I think if you're a fan of three and four, then definitely play Persona Q. Man, my experience with Persona is so limited. Like I remember watching Lord Matt play Persona mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. Um, and I think a little bit of Persona two. And then other than that, I wanted to play four because I heard good things about it. Uh, Persona Four Golden, yeah, yeah, on the Vita, mm-hmm. uh, but I don't own a Vita. So, and it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, I really want to play this. I've heard great things about it, 
But man, when I bought, like, I still regret buying my PSP. I still yeah. regret it. And it's like, I still even kind of look at it. I'm like, why did I fucking buy you? I cannot <laughs> believe that I bought you in two games and that's it. That's basically what I did too, man. I, I hate it. I hate that. Yeah. I, I mean, I love the games that I played on it. Like, I played Patapon, which Jacob told me about. Mm-hmm. That's an awesome game. Loved it. I'm actually curious what Rhythm Master uh, Paul Korn thinks about it because it's, you know, like a rhythm adventure game almost mm-hmm. um almost a, a, a rhythm strategy game but yeah i that's why i can't pull the trigger on on the vita i wish i think it's got a much better library than the psp has yeah it would have like, to i i have a because you have to get them off amazon no one sells vita games especially around here you really just don't like they might have two at our local walmart and like not even that many at like GameStop or anything like this around because i know the vita is like a struggling system in comparison, which is sad because I I love my Vita, I love it, and I have an extensive Vita library, and I've thir- I've enjoyed the shit of like every game I've sat down and played for it. I didn't know it was still active, honestly. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie, yeah, I didn't know that they were still supporting it. It yeah. ha- it has some good integration with PlayStation Four. Yeah, that's cool. But I think the problem is with the Vita is like compared to like the 3DS because like Nintendo's whole thing is using. Older hardware that's cheap for them to get, yeah. But use those limitations for you know creativity and you know that's the Nintendo thing, right? So like the 3DS is just like we'll take these two cheaper screens and you know well you know this yeah. is what Nintendo's always done, and I'm okay with that. The thing with the Vita is like they just pumped in like new like fantastic beautiful hardware, like uh-huh. but it's so. It's new sort of cutting edge technology, therefore it's harder to program for, therefore it's more expensive to program for. Gotcha. And when the market share isn't as big, yeah. it's sort of just like it just doubles down on the on the sure. risk. Yeah. I mean so the, no what, one the why would a developer develop for the the risky platform when they yeah. could go for the more money on 3DS. production, it might not yeah. make as much. Yeah. Not many people own them. So I it's just it. like Vita's Vita is the better Vita to me is the better system than three yeah. DS. It just is. But, I mean, it just, yeah, it just can't succeed right now, which it sucks because I think it's a great system. It has a lot of great features, but, yeah. I don't plan on getting one until I can find one cheap. I don't blame you. Like, like real cheap. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll be set with games whenever yeah, that comes up. That's so. awesome. I'm glad to hear it. So in five years when I own a Vita, I can play all these games. Then we'll do Persona 3 and 4. <laughs> Do they have uh, either of those? I mean, did Persona 3 and Persona 4 come out exclusively for the Vita? I think Persona 4 Golden is exclusively for the Vita. Yeah. Um, 3, I think, is a PlayStation 2 game as well. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's I, an older game. Yeah, because and they, they redid it for PSP and then re-released that again on the Vita. I played the PSP Vita re-release. I bought okay. it on the online store. And they changed that up by... You can play a character of the opposite gender, and because normally you play you play the boy, but and then in the PSP release they where you can just play as a girl and but you don't romance the same characters you romance the male characters which weren't an option in the other game okay so it flips everything entirely okay so it's not like Honey Pop where it's right. just like oh you're a lesbian the th- no I happen to like boys now sure all right they all <laughs> like it too it's fine cool so. That's really, I can't think of anything. Simpsons tapped out. Yeah. I've been playing a lot of that, I guess. That's been my primary shitting game. Buying donuts? Uh, let's see. I. Uh, it was months and months ago. You did not say no immediately. So I, yeah. said, I was like, oh, he bought some donuts. I bought a, I spent three ninety nine on what would have been like $40 had I bought it. A la carte. But Were they, they had doing like, like a special or they something? They had like yeah. a one-time, one-hour special when they introduced like some new feature. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, that's, okay, that's actually pretty good. So I, for like $3, you know, yeah. that, I bought it. That's the only thing I've spent off of it. Yeah. But other than that, it's it's interesting. It's I mean, it's got no depth, you know, but it's just nice to see like, oh, yeah, remember that in The Simpsons? I like that. That's yeah. cool. That's fine. <laughs> so they're All doing right. it right is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's got like, they do, they have such a huge base to play into like, the Simpsons has, I mean, they have so many fucking characters already, and there's oh, yeah. there's always going to be more, and more that I don't know because I stopped watching the show ten years ago. So, but 
the the name that I sh- I cannot mention, the game I I told Peter Pan I can't mention, I've slacked <laughs> off on considerably. I finished all the quests and everything in that game, and they weren't releasing more, so I just kind of stopped playing it. Yeah, yeah. You increased your fame level to the maximum. No, I just um, they stopped giving me quests, so it was just a lot harder to do. I think I think since Valentine's Day they added some, but like there was a two month stretch where they just didn't update anything. Yeah, and I had finished all their content. This so I is stopped playing it. This is the game that runs with Bim Bardashian. Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, I've been playing. <laughs> man, you. This is gonna. I'm curious to hear your reaction. Um, okay. Uh, did you know that Squaresoft just recently released a Final Fantasy Portal app? Um, no. where you can buy games and stuff and like in typical square bullshit, poor design, poor decision making, like the app is essentially a website. It's like you, it like reminded me like, as soon as I pulled it up, I was like, Oh my God, it's like fucking Mognet or something. And it's like, so <laughs> like they're not doing, they don't understand what an app is supposed to be. <laughs> Cause it's like, I downloaded it. Cause there was a special, where there's this deal where it's like, Hey, when they launched it, they're like, uh, you get final fantasy two for free. If you download the, the portal app, I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. how about let's do that. I downloaded it, opened it up. And I was like, uh, it's just a website. Like it's like, it's, it's like a website inside an app. It is ridiculous. And it's like, this looks like I'm in Safari right now. This doesn't make any fucking sense. So like I go through like all this like weird navigation. It's like, I feel like I'm following this string down a hallway or something. And it's like, there's a door and I ring the doorbell and then like, here's final fantasy two. I'm like, Oh sweet. Install it, play it. Here's why I didn't tell you about it. It's awful. It's mm. awful. It's like I was like, "Fuck you!" I jumped through so many goddamn hoops literal, literal to get two, this game. Japanese two, Japanese two, mm. uh, which I've never played. Yeah, um, and I don't know what version it is. Uh, I don't know if they just did a straight up mobile version for it, or if it's based on a three or a, a DS version or, yeah. a, or a, a Game Boy Advance version. Um, but it is the controls in that game are awful. Because they use the um, – uh, obviously, it's virtual con- uh, controls because mm-hmm. I don't have a gamepad hooked up to my iPad. But um, it does this thing where it's like um, it doesn't remember where my thumbs were. And it tries to – every time I move my thumbs, it like tries to recalibrate it. So what it boils down to oh. is I cannot walk accurately. And it's like <laughs> – like I, I couldn't get out of the first fo- – like courtroom and it was just like nope not playing this game nope not doing it not even going to tell anybody about it because i don't want them to go through this fucking miserable experience <laughs> but i what i did find on there i got reintroduced to something that i hated in the past and for some reason decided to play can you guess what it is something that you hated i hate to play and i still really don't like i still think it's a pretty shitty game mystic quest that's a good guess i've never played mystic quest well we'll get to it sometime <laughs> it's down there Triple Triad. Oh, <laughs> oh. They have they have the Triple oh. Triad card game in uh, the Final Fantasy Portal app, and it looks exactly like it fucking did in Final Fantasy VIII. Like I mean, it's like they didn't change anything to it <laughs> except they added new cards, mm-hmm. and so they like pull card artwork or they pull artwork from other Final Fantasy games mm-hmm. and just slap them on a card and assign four numbers uh, to the sides, um, and it is awful and I cannot stop playing it like at the same time. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just like, Oh, well, I mean, I got five free games to play. I might as well, I might as well play those games. I can see where that's okay on iPad. Uh, it, it works like as far as like UI and everything, it, it works well. It's mm-hmm. just the game itself. Like triple try it. Like it's not, I don't think it's a fun game <laughs> cause it's all like, it's all just it's war essentially. You know the card game War? <laughs> yeah. It's war. My aunt and I play that all the time. <laughs> but instead of comparing two numbers, you're comparing eight numbers. Like that's what it, like okay, does this Oh, if I play this, I got to look look at the sides. Are there any weird combos? Is there like an addition combo or if I throw a card down, it's going to flip the whole board? Um it's not fun. It's not fun <laughs> like Magic the Gathering is fun. It's very it's a very like it makes me worried about Squaresoft because it's like they mm. I I am worried that they do not know. Now, granted, Triple Triad was invented when I was in high school, but like even then, I was like, do they know what's fun? <laughs> do they like they know Magic the Gathering exists, right? And that like mm. that's fun, uh, but instead, it's just like 
yeah, we just invented this game that's all about numbers. Uh, it has nothing to do with Final Fantasy or like the cards. Um, there's really no deep strategy beyond comparing numbers like there is in mm. <laughs> Hearthstone or Magic the Gathering where you develop, you build decks and develop strategies based around key cards and you you create engines that are going to like, okay, this is the engine I'm going to make that's going to win me the game. There's none of that in Triple Triad. All it is is get cards with high numbers. <laughs> that's how that's how that sums up. Because yeah, we had a discussion about um, Final Fantasy fifteen. Yeah, a few like months ago. Yeah, on whether when it's going to come out. Yeah, because they asked, say it's going to come out this out? year, right? Yeah, that's what they claim. Like, the, like close to the end of this year, and I was like, eh, I'd be I'd be surprised. It wouldn't surprise me if it's the end of next year and not this year. The combat's supposed to be like Kingdom Hearts, I hear. Yeah. So I was, the reason I even asked you about it was because uh, I, I have never played Kingdom Hearts. So I kind of want to like gauge uh, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, that that's the direction they're heading. I have never said it and played it myself. I've watched Meg play it extensively. Yeah. She loved it. It looks good to me. I bought the HD remixes for PlayStation 3. It's because I wanted to play through the updated ones myself. Yeah. So I plan on doing it because I'd love for us to do Kingdom Hearts. I think a lot of people would be interested in that. I want to play it, man, but I got so remember, it. Like, the first time I heard one. about it, I was like, Disney and Sk- what? Oh, no, I was the same what? way, dude. No, I did not no, want to have anything to do with it. Apparently, That's apparently a baby game. Well. That's yeah. a baby, <laughs> baby game. And then I was told, but David Boyanis is Squall. All right, all right, all right. Uh, that wa- was the turning point. I'll watch you play it. I'll watch you play it. <laughs> but who's who's Sephiroth? That's uh, uh, Lance Bass, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the first one, they change him after that. But yeah, yeah. Um, you know what's really okay? Lance Bass. He was a Backstreet Boy in sync. Yeah, in sync. Okay. <sighs> all right. So Tony F- Fatone. He's another guy. In sync. He's in sync. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have heard him on some like podcasts and stuff. Mm. That is a funny dude. He, yeah, I he like is a Patel. funny dude. He was on Nick Arcade. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. <laughs> Link in the show notes if I can find it on YouTube again. Uh, I've also been playing uh, Heroes of the Storm as usual. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's business as usual. Um, they introduced a character a couple weeks ago, uh, which is the wizard from Diablo 3. Um, okay. so, uh, her name is Li Ming and she is, um, kind of a badass. She's kind of a badass. Um, she's got like all the abilities or most of the abilities from that she has in Diablo three. So like, I like to roll with this, uh, arcane missile build. That's all about, all about missiles and all about, um, her disintegration ray. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. Um, other than that, I also picked up street fighter five. Because I like the Street Fighter franchise, mm-hmm. uh, I've heard some serious complaints about it. Man, I have my I have my complaints about it. I do. I really, really do have my complaints about it. I I regret buying the game when I did. Um, and you know, I because it's I, unfinished, right? It's it is really. It unfinished. is really. It is a bare bones game. The I played through the story mode. And it is like some of the characters uh, have two fights and then an epilogue and their story is done. <laughs> Their the story is told in a very like when I was when I was playing it, I was like, oh, cool storyboards. Great. Just completely unpolished, just like here's our prototype artwork for this story. Oh man. No, it's all it's one hundred percent voice acted. Uh, but nothing moves, and there's like three slides. It is boring. Story mode is so boring, and that sucks because, like, man, I honestly think Street Fighter Four gets some hate because I feel like it wasn't like a, a really good, like, there wasn't a really good point of entry in Street Fighter Four. Like, I feel like Street Fighter Four was like a really hard game to get into, mm-hmm. especially because it like lasted a really long time too. And they had all kinds of different versions of street fighter four. So if you came in late when the roster was like really big, like it was hard, it was a hard game to get into. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Street Fighter Five, I feel like is easier to get into, but holy shit, man! Like the story mode is nowhere near as as fun as it was in Street Fighter Four. Um, the roster feels small to me, but then again, that might be because I'm, I'm used to Good DLC characters. You gotta, I, gotta wait, I, man. Gotta I know wait. it is so. It is such bullshit, and it's like these are all things that I told myself. Like this is the power of brand. Like this is the power mm. of a brand. Um, I knew all of these things going in. I knew all of it. I was like, well, I mean, I'm going to have to buy characters through DLC probably. Um, and I'm going to have to like, um, the game's not finished. I knew that knew the game wasn't finished. I was like, you know what? I want to check it out. (laughs) I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't explain like why, like logically that does not make sense. Like for any other game, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to wait on that. I'm going to buy that game for $20 because it's going to be $20 in like two months. Mm-hmm. Like it just is yeah. uh, like, I like you, you're going to find that on Steam for like $20 in two months. I would almost bet you fucking money right here on the spot that, that, that there's going to be some sale because the reviews and the, like the, the feedback on this game have been so mixed. very bad. Yeah. Um, I do think it's cool that like, they've got this, the, almost like this heroes of the storm system built in where it's like, you're not necessarily going to have to buy DLC characters with real money. You can buy it with, um, and I love they name it this. I love that they named this because I'm a Balrog fan. Uh, They call it fight money. (laughs) (laughs) Balrog is not in the game, which is a a point Ah. of contention for me. Uh, But yes, you you earn fight money uh, by by playing people online, uh, and then you can use that fight money. From what I understand, I might be completely mm. wrong, but you can use that fight money in place of uh, U.S. dollars or Sony moon bucks uh, to purchase <laughs> DLC characters. I remember future. from Marvel's Capcom 2, like, yeah. playing that at Jacob's house, like, so much on the Dreamcast, like, playing, like, over, being the game over and over again to, like, get enough in-game, cur- get points or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to buy... <laughs> I remember like saving up, like bot serve bot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say so, you know, God, it was such a good game. I yeah. really love that game. Yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom. I love that. I love that series. Yeah, That's a good I could series get into three games. as much as two. Yeah, but. three. I really liked the whole like aerial combos and stuff like that because mm. like that was. I felt like that was the big thing with Marvel vs. Capcom three is doing that launch and then doing an aerial combo. Um, and then the whole um, X Factor thing, that's really cool. That's brought into Street Fighter V a little bit. You've got a V trigger that fills up, and then you can activate it. And uh, that's kind of cool because, like, you can activate it, and then, like, it'll change uh, Ryu's Hadoken a little bit. Like, it'll alter. Uh, it's like a meta magic feat in D&D when you activate it. So that's neat because it kind of changes up the fighting style. Uh, but on the whole, man, I was disappointed. Did you see where like what the t- one of the top ranked Street Fighter players in the world was beaten by uh, Lupe Fiasco? <laughs> no, I did not see that. So I watched the video. It's like um, the guy is like I mean literally one of the top players in the world, and like it's it's a super close match, but like they're both. And I was not impressed by it. Like watching them play, it's like Dave and I play sort of like that. Like that's not <laughs> like I'm just spending something amazing, but like they're just sort of like. Lean back in chairs, like not making much of an expression. Everyone around them is like going nuts, and they're just. <laughs> <laughs> and then un- unranked, like celebrity player Lupe Fiasco takes down, <laughs> and they're playing Ryu and Ken. Oh, nice! Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, stuff like that is always just kind of like. <sighs> There's this balance, right? Because I do really feel like I'm in the middle, and that is not a good place to be. Here's here I'm in the middle, and here are the two sides. Side side A, fighting games are something you need to be really serious about and really need to study and understand and train to be good at. Here's side B. No, you don't have to do that at all. It's just like instinct. It's just pure. Like you can be fine as long as you know a few things. Like as long as you know the basics, you're going to be fine. Yeah. And I'm somewhere in the middle, and that means that I am awful playing people <laughs> online. Um, I don't know. Just going online. And playing Street Fighter Five is like it feels so weird because it's like I never would have anxiety before playing like in person. Even if it was someone I didn't know, mm-hmm. like I, I wouldn't have a problem playing somebody in person because it's just like 
I, I don't know why. There's for some reason it's it's different when I play someone online because when I don't see the person, it's like I, I don't. I get in my own head. I'm like, who is this? Who is this person that I'm playing? Like it could be anybody. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it could be it could be a very small child who just soundly whooped my ass, and it probably is. It probably yeah. is like a 13 year old kid, <laughs> um, and I just can't come to terms with that. Yeah, I don't know. I'll. I'll... I don't imagine like I'll, I bought Street Fighter four like really early on, and I was like, I don't like this that much, and I just nah, I probably unless I see something like toward the end of its life cycle really cheap, I'll probably never pick up another one. I get it. I do. I get it. It's really Marvel's Capcom four. I might get that. Yeah. But like after I bought three, and then. A few months later, they had Ultimate Edition, and then it's like, I know. oh, yeah, no, I'm, not, arcade, I'm not going to do this. Arcade edition, I'm not going to do like, it. Edition, edition, edition. Yep. Super Ultra Edition. Yeah. Mega T, Mega Toe. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can tell because Phoenix Wright presents his, his evidence slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Uh, my recommendation would be uh, don't buy Street Fighter Five yet. Yeah. Wait and buy it cheap because it will be cheap, and then... Because they're introducing be something new for free later. Like yeah, they are doing they are doing that. Like um, Cody Doppelganger Cody has he told me that they're like story mode isn't done and they're gonna like do a patch I think in March which completes story mode and stuff like that. the The story is that they rushed it out to get it ready for a tournament. Um, and that is bullshit because it's like why not just let it be at the tournament then fuck it yeah do it the wizard style yeah exactly <laughs> just do that and then like let it build hype right based on the tournament because now it's an exclusive thing mm-hmm. so I don't know maybe the tournament was online I don't know any of this this is all just like secondhand information yeah. um, that I got from Doppelganger Cody so I don't know <sighs> it's a bummer though yeah it's a bummer because God I mean I feel like I would have like all the top, the world ranked Street Fighter Four players mm-hmm. give them Street Fighter Five mm-hmm. a month ahead of time. Then have your then have the tournament yeah. as the exclusive reveal. So the best players in the world know the system and then are playing it beautifully with all the awesome combos yeah. to inspire people to buy it. Yeah, absolutely. And let them stream it. Yep. Let them stream it uh, to build hype up, and then yeah, release the game when it's finished. Um. It's tough, man, because it's like I, I waffle back and forth because I kickstart games. Like, mm-hmm. I've done that, and, like, I've greenlit games that aren't done. Darkest Dungeon wasn't done when I bought it, um, but it was done enough. It felt like – it like, Darkest Dungeon felt like it was done. Mm-hmm. Um, Street Fighter Five, like, I have never played a game – I've played games in beta that felt more done than this game. Ugh. The game does not feel, like, even remotely – it just feels thin. It just yeah. feels paper – thin um there's some cool stuff um birdies in the game i like birdie Mm -hmm. uh i'd love a good final fight callback Mm -mm. uh he's all super fat now which um at first i didn't like because like oh rufus isn't in this game and they needed a fat dude so and (laughs) ihan is not in the game Blanca's not in the game like they're really missing some like key components the street fighter really makes the characters you will spend money on oh yeah absolutely that's the first thing i thought of when i was like okay who they got oh they got vega they have m bison uh they do not did we hear a ghost I kicked uh, my brother's Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> we just heard the ghost of his Xbox like, One. I don't know if it yelled at me or I turned it on. Oh, my but. goodness. Uh, but, yeah, man, there's, like, some clear – they clearly left some characters out that are, like, they're gaping holes in Street Fighter. Because it's like, uh, what? No E-Honda? No Blanca? Mm-hmm. No uh, Balrog? That's a big deal to me. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did kind of feel like – and, like – it. I sat there and I was like, they're going to make me pay for these Who's characters. in it? Uh, Cammy, Armika, and uh, Dan. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's not in the game. That's it. Unfortunately. But yeah, Armika is. And I'll say. Oh, uh, and, so- and so- uh, Sakura. That's that's it. Sakura. <laughs> she is in a cutscene, not in the game. Guess who else is in a cutscene standing there still, not in the game? Guile. Guile. Wow. <laughs> yep. Okay. Charlie Nash is in the game. Undead. He's back. He's yeah. back. He's all stitched together. He's Frankenstein monster, Charlie Nash. Okay. Um, and his story is really weird because like he was resurrected by like a Soviet necromancer. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, I mean, it's where. I, mean, I guess it makes sense. I guess it makes sense. <laughs> Uh, they just bring him to Chernobyl and dip him in a couple times. He's fine. That's fine. Yeah, just leave him the elephant's foot for like a yeah. week. Yeah, back up. It's fine. So yeah, I can't recommend it right now. Uh, I haven't played a lot online yet because I don't. <laughs> I I'm so like I mean this is like a series of like the worst possible decisions that I could make because I was like, well, this is coming out on a PC, but I do have this PlayStation Four that I should probably get games for, so I don't just play Star Wars Battlefront single player uh i should probably buy another game for it so like yeah i'll buy i'll buy street fighter 5 for playstation knowing like i don't have a playstation plus account or anything like i'm never gonna be able to like play someone online or anything like that and then it's like people are messaging me like hey did you pick up street fighter 5 yes i did i made a poor decision and bought it on playstation uh which i do not pay the 50 dollars a year so i can play Mm. you online um, they had a free multiplayer weekend this this mm-hmm. past weekend, so I did get to play a little online um, and just confirm how awful I am <laughs> at it. I'm awful. Did not like it. Won't do it again. Because <laughs> yeah, I can't. I mean, man, I hate it enough playing Resident Evil Five online. I can't imagine like sort of sort of something on Steam. I'm not gonna take. My PS4 or anything online. Fuck it, no. Dude, yeah. it is like... I didn't like having to play Awesome Knots online that much, <laughs> so... Playing, um, playing Street Fighter Four on Xbox Live was kind of a miserable experience. I did really <laughs> like that game, but I think I've said this on the show before. It did not matter if I... Like, if I beat someone in a match, I would get a message after the match immediately. You scrub noob. You wouldn't have been able to beat me if you weren't spamming. Whatever. And then on the other hand, if I lost, I would get a message. Oh, I can't believe you didn't do this and this. It's like, God, just how much time do you fucking have to like, you know what I'm going to do today? Play a bunch of people online. And then when I'm done, I'm going to make fun of them. I'm going to take the time to type with my Xbox controller. (laughs) I'm going to take the time to type a paragraph to each person that I fight. Uh, It uses many racial slurs. And I'm just going to make all kinds of just like grabs about, I don't know what your sexuality is, but I'm going to (laughs) guess. I'm always going to guess the same thing. (laughs) Eventually I'll get one. Yep. So yeah, miserable experience. Um, I, I haven't had that with street fighter five, so I don't know Hmm. if, um, everyone's just like, Oh, so sad. I bought this game. I don't have the will to (laughs) to send a hateful message. Mm. I don't know. They're on YouTube making comments, YouTube and topics. Oh man. So dude, I watched some street fighter five on Twitch. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is, man, I get it. I didn't get it until watching street fighter five on Twitch, like people talking about the fighting game community being toxic. It is. It, it from what I have seen and what I've experienced with Street Fighter 4, even then, even getting those messages from those people, I was like, ah, eh, probably just probably just some bullshit kids. I mean, it bothered me, mm-hmm. but not to the point where it's like, this community is fucked. But like watching like people play Street Fighter 5 on Twitch, I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, this this is a really like <laughs> this is a dark ass community. Oh. Uh like like more so than MOBAs. Like way more so oh, than MOBAs. My God. Like way, way like take a take what you think of a MOBA community, like take all the negative things and then just put it in the giant Ghostbuster Tattoo vault. Tattoo green land. Throw it <laughs> yeah, at a giant exactly. growth on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is just like it's just compressed man i was like i like i've dealt with some shit bags for sure in heroes of the storm but like it's never like i've always had that mute option if someone's being a shithead mute you're done and i don't have to deal with it anymore yeah but it's like i don't know i don't know i'm i guess i'm just too old that i mean you've <laughs> you've solidified me into like Sorry. My single player experiences. Sorry, I, that was not my intention <laughs> people but. i know and single player experiences it's just i don't I don't get it. At the same time, I mean, it's like when I played UO when I was in high school, I was that guy. Like, I was totally, like, I had so much time. I didn't have to do any fucking thing. I could just, I could... I could just grief a dude for two hours just just to do it. <laughs> just chase him around. Just, yeah. to do, just to make him <laughs> miserable. <laughs> so it's like, I'm totally a hypocrite saying this as like a 35-year-old man. 
Um, but get a job, kid. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Go, go, finger blast your Twitter girls. <laughs> 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 So that's what I've been playing. Swipe left on responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how are we doing on time? Uh, we're all right. We got maybe 10 more minutes. You want to do a, a call or two? Sure. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm. I was excited to see Gunstar Heroes also come out for free on that Sega pack. Oh, it did? I uh-huh. missed that. Is it still available? I don't know. Shit. Because I want to play Gunstar Heroes, because I've never played it. Oh, you haven't? No, I've never played I it. I thoroughly, like, that was the one good game my grandmother happened to have. Like, Nice. Ryan has a copy of it right here. But, uh, yeah, that's one thing I would really like to do for, the, uh, for, the, for the show. Part of the Make War, Not Love yep. bundle. I'm at the check when we're done to see if I can still get that. Because <laughs> I was able to get the Streets of Rage 2 bundle, and then whatever bundle was before it, I got that too. Uh, big ups to... Rhythm or not Rhythm Master, uh, Ruby Baron, Paul Cluel, yeah, uh, for letting me know about that because I would have completely missed that because I haven't been on Reddit recently and and so I miss all like the the free stuff. Yeah. All right, here's a call. This is from Taryn. Good morning, Catbox. It is around six fifty a.m. on. She's cheery. Uh, She's a morning person. Uh, on a Friday, <laughs> I'm heading into work. I've actually already been to one location. I'm heading to my actual office. Oh, this is a uh, uh, co-host of Full Position, by the way, Karen. Um, <laughs> hope you guys are doing well. So I don't want to uh, hurt your feelings or you to get mad at me or anything, but I do listen to other podcasts. I know. Turn it off. In my heart, in my heart's apart. T- turn it d- off. Done. All right. Done. Next, next call. <laughs> this is from 520. <laughs> Fucking sad pod. Whoa. It's got the best puke stories. I don't think I can top them. But uh, here, I'll try. It was my 22nd birthday, and we ran out of booze, but I had some upper clear. And mm, since it go. was in December, we had some eggnog. Well, guess uh, what? Bring alcohol and eggnog uh, equals projectile uh, vomiting uh, all over the back, no. the back uh, yard. Uh. <laughs> anyway, have a good one. Bye. <laughs> eggnog, I still don't get it. Oh, man. All right, we'll go back to Taryn now. I'm not mad at her anymore. No, I am. You're so bad at okay. Yeah, I am. No, she's <laughs> cheating on us. She, do you think, what do you think the rest of that call is? She's like, I've been on like four podcasts and their dicks are so much bigger than y'all's. No, I'm not listening to that bullshit. No, fuck that. Here's another call from 757. What's up, Tad Pog? It's your beloved Adam. Adam. 9.30 on a Friday night. I'm thinking about you. I'm actually driving home from work and uh, it's raining. And I am in the beginning phase of the Garfield, spend the weekend with Garfield or something. I don't know. <laughs> Garfield is uh, a wonderful weekend. I'm, I'm listening to that one right now, but I wanted to call in before I got too far into the, uh, the episode to uh, let you know a couple things. Uh, one, I sent uh, a package to you. Um, it's not super glamorous, so don't be too excited. But uh, I did send you something, and uh, I'm really excited about it. You'll probably get it before you get this. Um, so, cool. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, also, uh, I thought of something else. Um, I remember I called a little while ago and thought that the reason why Ashley Shake was one of your top search uh, top search words because it sounds like a stripper or porn star name. <laughs> uh, I thought of another reason. Uh, his other name is Cockbaster Shake. <laughs> and that probably led men to think, oh, this girl, Ashley Shake, is a cockmaster. <laughs> so She's really mastered the cock. During the <laughs> super refreshment episode and never never looked back. So that might be another thing to think about. That just popped into my head the other day. Uh, uh, wanted to uh, congratulate Jacob uh, on his engagement. Man, that's exciting. I'm so, so excited. I don't know you and I don't know your fiancé. Um, but I'm really excited for you both. I think you're both going to be really happy and I wish you all the best and, uh, and, uh, really excited about that for you. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to call in and say those things and, uh, I'll call back in a little while cause I've got a question about, uh, brute deodorant and aftershave, uh, <laughs> mm, as well as perfect. some other mm, things perfect. to ask. So I'll talk to you in a little while after I finish this episode and, uh, 
I love you guys. Bye. We love, love you too, Adam. Adam. Thank you. Well, I, sure, I think I believe we've got that package. We have. I believe we have. I can't say that with certainty, but I th- we had to have because he sent that on January fifteenth. Yeah, we've gotten it then. Pretty sure. We'll see. I guess. <laughs> I remember. I remember opening something from him. Yeah. But I don't know if it's like another one or. Yeah. All I'm right. Not for sure. We'll have to check our Adam package log. Um. Yeah. Ashley Shake is uh, not going to like you, Adam. <laughs> uh, that is a dude who would not take kindly to the things that you said. Well, he won't ever get to this episode. No. He's still like... You've made an enemy today, He's Adam. probably in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not... Like, it's funny to, for me to say, but I am not joking. Mm. <laughs> I don't think Ashley will forgive you for no that. No one holds a grudge like Ashley Shake. Yeah, not true. even Jacob York, who is also a grudge master. <laughs> like, But I'm, I still love you, Adam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're our beloved Adam. And I think all, all the things you said are valid also. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that might be why people are searching. I would <laughs> I would search for a cockmaster. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see. Here's a call from 731. I think this is I think this is Saint Zach. Let's see uh let's see how sleepy he is. Tampog Nation, Saint Zach here. I was uh watching a um, big trouble from Little China. Big Trouble in Little Chinatown with uh, one of my good friends who has never seen it before, and I was going to let him give you a drunken synopsis of the plot. So, Corbin, go. Okay, so far, we're dealing with, like, there's a big gang war happening, yes. and it's a fucking long-ass fucking, like, uh, ancient um, rule, pretty much, like, gang war that's been happening for, like, a couple hundred years. Uh-huh. So you have the good guys that have been, like, fighting the bad guys. The bad guys have a lot of magical powers that, been, like, black magic they've been using to fucking pretty much, like, have a dictatorship rule over the whole entire populace of Little Chinatown in San Francisco that they brought over from China. So pretty much what the, what's been happening is the old man, which is the guy's uncle, um, he's been trying to warn him about all this bad shit that's been happening, and this guy's... Uh, all he's trying to do is just get his fucking uh, fiance back that uh, that they think is very valuable because he has green eyes because of her heritage, pretty much. <laughs> what about Jack Burton? <laughs> Jack Burton's just a badass fucking truck driver. That's like, <laughs> what is happening to us right now? <laughs> he's uh, beating gambling here, <laughs> and all he's trying to do is just help her out and uh, save the day, pretty much. And that is a synopsis of Big Trouble in the Little Town of Town. Thank you, Tadpog Nation, and uh, Paylor Bless. That's how you know Zach's in a good mood. I know. He uses darker deities to bless us when he's not in a good mood. <laughs> yeah. it is, it's, big, it's Big Trouble in Little China, right? It's not Big Trouble in Little Chinatown. It's the Chinatown inside Chinatown. It's the, it's the very small Chinatown. It's like everything's Big Trouble when you're in there. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no other option. Everything is bigger than it. Um, all right. Yeah, sure. Corbin, I like you. Uh, and thank you for... Thank you for, I guess, pausing the movie to call us. That's my favorite part. Is getting drunk and watching movies, is that a thing people do? Probably, right? I mean, because you figure you want to you remember the movie, right? Depends. Okay. Like when I saw, what was it, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? Mm-hmm. I do not remember that movie. <laughs> I do not remember. I remember uh, that I ruined that experience for people, but no, I do not remember <laughs> the movie. <laughs> that may be the only time I've actually shouted at a movie screen. <laughs> <laughs> we might be able to do one oh, more Except for when I saw Free Willy with my mom uh, Oh, decided to be a dick And decided to be a dick But I said the same things <laughs> Like I remember yelling, <laughs> fake <laughs> At both movies <laughs> Alright, we got one more mm-hmm. Alright, here we go This is from a rather wizened sage Ian Chandler Hi, fucking Tad Pog this is Wizened Old Sage, <laughs> also Raging Narcissist DM. So just listen to the All Call show from what was to me a couple of days ago. It was two years, probably last year sometime. Um, and here's the thing. You, you played, there was three calls that I had made, and you played. I know, third, fucked up. <laughs> you know, I wasn't even realizing. I had forgotten that I had called. But then you played the one where I asked about board games or 
where I clarified that I had called about asking about board games. Anyway, the thing, the takeaway here was not that I was upset that I missed an episode, that, that my calls weren't played. I was afraid I had missed an episode. So you, you scared me real bad, guys, because <laughs> there was no me on Artie Lightfoot. Um, I think that got cut out, like you said, yeah. the audio problem. Yeah. Uh, I was really worried that I had missed an episode, and that that was what bothered me the most. Not that my calls weren't playing. <laughs> so maybe I'm not as much of a raging narcissist as I thought. All right, guys. Uh, so talk about me, and then I'll think about me, and then I'll try to get me on the show again so we can talk about me some more. <laughs> Sounds good. Love you guys. Bye. We love you too, Ian. Yeah. We also still have to have Ian tell sex stories for a Patreon episode. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, we need to do that. Uh, let's see. It's pretty good. It's pretty good on time. All right. Because now, because we're going to record a double. So, whenever you hear this, us doing this, and by the time you hear Wednesday's episode, I'm going to go take my sleeping medicine, and we're going to take a bunch of calls. <laughs> but don't worry. We'll see we'll, how that goes. We'll both still be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be able to tell that deep down we're very sad. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud for now. Yeah. Uh, so, if you miss the next episode, it's going to be all calls. Don't know what the theme is. Don't know how it'll shake out, but I'm woefully under unprepared. So we're gonna take calls because everybody stepped up and we have a yeah. Bunch we got of a lot calls. of calls. Thank you very very much yeah. for calling us because wow, we have a lot. We mm-hmm. have more than I think we have ever had at one time. Amazing. Like people Amazing. heard that we were like, I think like the listeners are like, oh shit, they're in the current month. Like they're call, they're playing calls that were made this month. And then they like formed a super network and like <laughs> called in like Zach's like, hey, my drunk friend's watching Big Trouble Little China. Fucking call it to Hedgehog, man. And then like everyone's doing this. I love it. So thank you. Let's see. We love four star. We we know we love more than four star reviews. Five star. Five star, five star reviews. <laughs> I was just as drunk. It's drunk. <laughs> it's five. We love five star. I mean, yeah, I don't really like four star. I don't really like them no, that much. Five no. star. Five, five star, star is reviews. good. So please find find us on iTunes. Subscribe. Give the show a five star rating. Write a review. I've also heard like to pop up in like the biggest video game podcast. It's all based on how many people click that subscribe button. So if you want to do an experiment uh, yeah. and after, because we were like on the top 100 video game podcasts, top 200, top 200. And then we dropped off and like it, it's, it changes dramatically every single day. So we'll do an experiment after this drops. Cause you go read, to iTunes. You read that, it, that the only metric that it uses for putting you in the top 200 is yeah. how many times the subscribe button is clicked. Yeah, no one knows all of them, but that's one that people people really believe in, like, I don't know if it was leaked or something like that. So just an experiment. Go ahead and go to iTunes, find Tadpog, and just hit subscribe just over and over and over and over again, and we'll just see if we can pop up. <laughs> I'll check. We'll check Tuesday and see where we are on the top on the top 200. Uh, but I mean, we're already there. Click the subscribe button. You may as well go ahead and leave us a five star written review. If there's a game you want us to play, guest host you want for an episode or a Patreon request, just throw that in there. So whatever you include in that review, we promise we will get to that eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We're going to be taking some calls, and then eventually we're going to talk about Streets of Rage Two, Three Ninjas Kick Back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you're looking for a game to play. And you want some you want some reference material? Uh, play one of those games. Uh, my suggestion would be Streets of Rage Two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I played Not both three of those ninjas? games. Uh, wow, I can't wait to talk about <laughs> both of them. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, you can always find us on tadpog.com. Uh, that's where the show notes live. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com/tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit. Hey, thank you for letting us know what you call a one-up or an extra man Mm -hmm, or an extra guy. mm -hmm. We did get some comments on Facebook regarding that question we asked on our last episode. Uh, And it was cool to see, like, 
um, I, I can't remember everybody who commented, but my, my favorite one was extra guy because it was like, oh yeah, extra guy. That makes sense. I don't know why that didn't even register in my yeah. old noggin there. Uh, extra man did for some reason, mm-hmm. but whatever. So thank you very much for uh, responding to that. Um, also, we're on Twitter. We That's how we find all of our um, cam girls. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can follow us if you want at, at – we're at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome. I realize. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you for retweeting us. Let me remember to tell you for my next – Part of my next intro Uh-oh. will be about my my most recent cam girl observation. Okay, perfect. Okay, there you well, go. <laughs> there's, a, there's, your, uh, there's your incentive to listen to Wednesday's yeah. episode, listener, because <laughs> I want to know. And I get to find out in about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, also, you can call us if you want. If you want to be one of the cool people that we uh, play on the show, uh, you can send us a voicemail at 859. That's my actual phone number that i'm about to give out <laughs> to the internet because i am frantically the whole time i'm doing this outro i'm scrolling through emails to try to find new patreon donors so that's why i'm, I'm getting I'm, all fucked i've got up. it pulled up oh, thank god <laughs> well now i can stop and i can concentrate so we had it was a bumper week for the patreon four new patreon subscribers let me get let me give the number and then we'll do patreon okay if you want to call us, do so at 270-883-2555. Yeah. So four new. Uh, let's see. Ky- I'm sorry if I said this wrong. Kyle Pertlebaugh. Okay. Thank you, Kyle. I don't have my new glasses on and the computer's at a distance, so I'm having a little, <laughs> little trouble here. No, that's great. Uh, just, and- just wing it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gates Elliott. Thank who you. Who I know from seminary somehow. Oh, yeah? Somehow, somehow we know each other. Okay, cool. We, we were... We a pair lived by each other within a small approximation for years. Had really, probably never spoken. Okay, but I appreciate now he's a Patreon donor. <laughs> That's Love awesome. It. Love it. That's great. Now he's my favorite person from Seminary. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> who's not a donor on here? Oh, not Blake. Well, well, not Blake. Well, Wiley has given us a shitload. So. That's true. Okay, <laughs> Wiley. But Wiley's also Kenneth's godfather. He has like special privileges. <laughs> I knew Wiley beforehand. <laughs> uh, Greg. So thank you, Greg. Yes, thank you. And Mason Schultz, who had got that message like, hey, you guys, all right, finally did it. I'm on Patreon. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mason. That's awesome. I. What happened that we got like four, like, bam, 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 bam? Pity. Pity. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. So whatever works, man. <laughs> I'll, I'll take Patreon donors like I take yep, sex. Uh-huh. Pity is totally yep, fine. Yep, yep. Doesn't matter. I got Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you wanna, if you wanna join the ranks of our wonderful and generous donors, uh, you can go to Patreon.com/slash/tadpog. Uh, and uh, donate there. You can get access to our uh, bonus episodes that we do and we need to do for February. That's hanging over our heads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We know what we're going to do, so at least we yeah. have that yeah. underway. It's about pornography. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, so if you've been on the fence, mm-hmm. if you've been on the fence about donating on Patreon for the <laughs> if you've bonus been episodes, on the fence about this pornography, yeah, thing, <laughs> we really we settle the issue. <laughs> we're gonna get to the root of it. Actually, one of us is going to become a porn star on the episode. <laughs> we so. we strongly debate pro porn versus pro porn. Yeah, <laughs> and see so what welcome, side comes out ahead. Welcome to the Echo Chamber Podcast with Tyler and Dave. <laughs> Oh man, uh, Nicole's box is still. It's speaking of pe- porn. People have been been filling it up. I've gotten several messages messages telling us that know, packages are on the way. No, we're gonna have some easy intros for like a week, I think. But here's the thing, though. Like Nicole's box, it can't get enough. It just can't. No, it's always Insatiable. aching and wants more. Yeah. So please help us try and satiate Nicole's just aching, hungry box. <laughs> By sending, by sending, growling, you know, growl, yeah, <laughs> the thirsty box. It's, it's it's got teeth now. It's just like <laughs> it's slowly becoming the plant from uh, the musical "Feed Me Seymour." Little Shop of Horrors. Little Shop of Horrors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audrey two. This would be yeah. Audrey three, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, if it if it didn't have a name before, <laughs> if it did not have a name. Your vagina's new name is Audrey Three. Right. You're welcome. Yeah. You're welcome. 
<laughs> There's our gift to you. <laughs> So if anybody wants to send us something, you can address it to Nicole's Audrey 3 Vagina <laughs> <laughs> or Tadpog Studios, Care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky, 42002. I wish I had said Sweetie Todd. <laughs> you asked the musical, uh, Sweetie Todd. <laughs> <laughs> we can never think of that when we need to. I know, it's fine. I know but now... I'm firing on all cylinders. Now. Sweetie Todd, I got it. Angel Lansbury, Johnny Depp, Sweetie Todd. <laughs> Demon Barbersville? Is that it? I don't know. Demon Barber of yeah, some Fleet Fleet Street. Fleet Street. Barber is a different thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I'm pretty sure I know because of Looney, Looney Tunes. Tunes. <laughs> yeah. How do kids know what classical music they, is now? They, they don't. <laughs> They don't. Yeah. Too busy fucking yep. all those internet <laughs> <Yep>. girls. <laughs> every, yeah, all those internet girls. Every time I'm looking at oh. pornography, I get a message from one who is two miles away and wants to fuck. <laughs> Half of our Twitter followers are the bots <laughs> that are just all about that. I don't know why I got shy in the middle of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I well, bots are not. They still yeah. want us, and it's it's yeah. a nice. I, I could not commit to that one. I got halfway in, and it was like, I don't like this. Well, encourage the bots, please. We yeah. like the attention, <laughs> please, bots. Want to fuck us? And then I get I I hate this man. This feeling where it's like, oh, I get a friend request on Facebook, huh? Oh, they, well, that's a fake person. Great, that's a fake person. <laughs> oh, sweet. Uh, you have a photograph of you and a someone in a bikini next to a living jaguar, <laughs> and you have one friend. And I'm going to go ahead and decline this friend request, I think. I remember it was weird because everybody kept getting bought invites at seminary uh, for somebody on Facebook, and it was like a very bussy girl in a bikini who passed, attended Virginia Theological Seminary. Uh-huh. And it's like, I uh, don't think so. <laughs> Does that really happen? Seminarians do not wear bikinis. No. Okay. Did you? I yeah, learned na- that. Naked I learned that and collared. It's it. Right. It's it. <laughs> <clears throat> Our theme song is "Moves" by Sycamore Drive. The link to that track can be found in the show notes at tadbog.com. How would you like to close it out? Uh, like Steve Martin from Little Shop of Horrors. Hmm. Okay, so until next time. Tropical Capricorn. I, I like to cause pain, so I'm a dentist. <laughs> That's all I remember about that show. Hi, I'm Steve Martin, everybody. <laughs> Do not remember the uh, character's name. Was he a weird dentist name? Like a pun dentist? Prob- probably. Okay. Probably. Good morning, Tad Fog. It is around 6.50 a.m. On, uh, uh, on a Friday. I'm heading into work. I've actually already been to one location. I'm heading to my actual office. Oh, this is a uh, uh, co-host of Full Position, by the way, Karen. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. So I don't want to uh, hurt your feelings or you to get mad at me or anything, but I do listen to other podcasts. I know in my heart, in my heart's of heart, Tad Pog is the only podcast that exists, but I am in my car a lot, so I do listen to other podcasts. Um, some of my other favorites that I listen to, I know Tyler and I have talked about Guys We Fucked, which is an hilarious podcast, and there's a new one out right now called Not the Worst Show, and if you guys think you talk about dicks and buttholes a lot, I think they got you beat. Uh, it's probably the filthiest stuff I've ever heard. Hilarious, though. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, I know Nicole and I have talked about uh, Lore, the Lore podcast, which is, uh, you know, about uh, haunted stories and, and creepy things, and it's great, great listen. But one of my other favorite podcasts that I listen to is uh, it's coasterradio.com. I know we've talked about theme parks a lot, and I'm a big coaster nerd. Uh, I love a good roller coaster. I love a good theme park. And they had a great question on their podcast this morning, and I think it was, be a great question for Tad Pog Nation. Um, they are per, they are basing it more on television shows and and uh, movies. But if you could create a theme park attraction 
whether it is an outdoor roller coaster, an indoor roller coaster, a walkthrough attraction, which I know you guys have been to Universal, so that would be like Twister. Um, if you could create an attraction based on a video game, which I know there's already some. I know they're not technically on video games, but, you know, a lot of superheroes and villains and things like that are already in the theme park industry. But if you could create a theme park attraction of your choosing based on any video game, what would it be? Uh, mine, of course, has already been created because there was already a Jaws attraction, uh, and that's one of my favorite video games. But just thinking off the top of my head, video game-wise, I think a uh I think a cool themed um uh Grand Theft Auto would be great, which is a video game I've actually played, like the older ones, but I think that would be a great uh like maybe a sit down virtual kind of ride. Um but anyway, that's just just some brainstorming. I hope you guys are doing well. Um hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Uh again it's seventy degrees here today. Sorry I keep rubbing that in your face. Have a great day. Bye bye. Uh easy. Uh mine would be called the Demon Machine. And it is an indoor roller coaster based off of Earthbound. And you start off the demon machine being that spoilers at the very end that is containing Gygus when you're fighting Pokey. And so it is you traveling toward Ness's face. And then when you go inside, it is dark and full of gas and it's scary and lights. And it's somebody moaning all of Gygus's lines and... As Gygus gets more damage, the surreal red starts flowing everywhere, and there's flashes. I mean, it's an epic like, nightmare. You have to sign a waiver when you go in. Sure. And that makes the, it more And the exciting. roller coaster gets faster and more loops and more intense the closer Gygus is to death. And then, yeah, that's it. The demon machine. I think I'd like um, a rampage ride where they just they give you a suit, and like you get in the suit, you wear the suit, you, know, giant, you choose a giant lizard, giant ape. Uh, and then you just go out and you just uh, punch and kick and climb a bunch of like Nerf buildings that are modular <laughs> and they can like put them back together when you're done. <laughs> I think that would be really cool. <laughs> so I'll go with that. Rampage. The experience. It's not a ride. The experience. It's the experience. <laughs> so thank you, Taryn. But you didn't think we were coming back to you, did you? Um, you Apparently you don't know us. Yeah. Yeah. You thought they don't love me anymore. No, mm-hmm. we love you. We love you enough to fuck with you. You know it's okay. Yeah.